Welcome, everyone. We will be streaming an underdog fantasy best ball draft. As always, Ryan and I will be your hosts, and we have a special guest on tap for today's show, senior analyst at Matthew Berry's Fantasy Life, Ian Harditz. Ian, talk to us about the, the big move that just happened. You were the marquee free agent of the, the analyst draft class. I appreciate that, Josh. Good to talk with you guys. First time that we, you know, we've done a, you know, not solo pod, but just a podcast together. So appreciate you guys having me on. But yeah, man, uh, it's been a, you know, chaotic here, t- two, three months for me. You know, I've changed some jobs before, but you know, just I think the final PFF Fantasy podcast I did was like six eighty six or something like that. So certainly was the first company to you know really give me my uh, own platform and just let me go off. And you know, can't thank them enough uh, for doing that. So all good, uh, all good in the past. But yeah, man, moving on now to mb fantasy life back with my boy dwayne mcfarland we got you know peter Overset, kendall valenzuela doing some fantastic social stuff that you know no one wants to see my ugly ass face up there anyway so it's a good balance with that obviously got the goat matthew berry pulling some strings uh, behind the scenes and all that so life is good man i got my uh you know first podcast back in under my belt you can check it out the fantasy life podcast uh with dwayne last wednesday got another one in yesterday so just good grinding guys i don't know about you like look it's i, I like taking some vacations from time to time going out touching the grass and all that but just like to me like when i can get a day where produce some content get a workout in you know that makes you know watching succession and having that you know glass to a bottle of wine at night that much better it really does ryan and i were talking about this towards the end of the season we were like you know what season's been fun but boy that off season where you make your own schedule yeah man, you don't have like the the constant content grind i think can wear on you where it's like Today I do this, Monday's this, Tuesday's this, Wednesday's this. In the off season, you get to be a little more creative. So uh I definitely know what you mean. Everyone make sure that you're following Ian on Twitter. Is it I Heart It's? It's a tricky one, man. It was actually I've only been called Ian since I graduated college. I was always just tips uh-huh. to my friends uh at all <laughs> levels. Like I would move, not know anyone. I went to college in Chicago, didn't know a soul when I got there, and it's just like seamless, man. But yes, I always say it's pronounced like Cheez It's, but Heart It's. So yeah, uh, there's a little fun fact. There we go. Ah, so I heart it's yes. That's the Twitter handle. <laughs> so I've got, uh, I'm, I'm entering a draft room. I'm not, I don't want to tell people when I'm entering it since I feel like sometimes people show up and they just purposely snipe the stream <laughs> and then you don't necessarily get that organic draft feel. So I will be entering a draft within the next, uh, two to three hours, everyone. So we'll see how long the stream <laughs> takes. So we'll just get ready for that. But I you worry about that get- for like the big board, like ten dollars. I, I definitely like when Dwayne and I do our <laughs> FFPC drafts, and you know we got like three hundred dollar entries or whatever. Like I'm not doing that shit live, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm with you on that. But I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I did one like higher stakes draft live last year, and I, immediately I was like, "This is a mistake." Yeah, bad idea. <laughs> I was I was just I was just petrified of like who was in the draft room, and I was looking at usernames and trying to like cross reference them, and I was like, "Does this person follow me? Do they know? Do, do they know who I am? What's?" What's going on? Let's check out these emails. So we will not have it set up like that. Ryan, do you have any thoughts before we we start streaming? No, I'm with Ian on this. For a ten dollar draft, I'm good with just just running in there and seeing what happens. But yeah, if we're if say we're doing an FFP main event where you know we're splitting a two thousand dollar entry, maybe then we record it and then you know post it the next day or something to that effect. I'm pumped Sounds though, boys. Good. My first best ball draft of the offseason. I like to wait until at oh. least the free agency cycle's over. Like I definitely yeah. think there's something to be said about, mm-hmm. you know, getting the rookies before their ADPs get too high once the landing spots are confirmed. But, you know, giving myself at least, you know, a month or two break of uh, drafting. But I like this environment a little better. I remember last year I was just like chilling at the uh, this, uh, Mexican bar across the street I like to go to. And I just, you know, opened up, you know, the app and just, just a horrendous team. The only thing I remember is that Zeke was on it and i did see a uh an, an underdog tweet saying he finished as the rb20 in a half ppr i hope per game uh but yeah well either way that team did not go very far <laughs> yeah the the underdog drafts are it's a good time everyone promo code 33rd if you want to sign up you get a 100 percent deposit match up to 100 dollars. one of my favorite off-season activities is i'll crack open a couple beers i'll have two to three drafts going at all times and I will just isolate in my apartment. So <laughs> what sounds terrible to some people sounds amazing to me. I so. would do that at the pool as much as I could uh, last like spring and summer, man. Just, you know, a little apartment pool, sit there, got my backpack with, you know, three to four cold ones in there and just start drafting. There we go. All right. I'm going to share. I hope we're not about to, to get a couple snipers left. We've got two people waiting to join. 
Can both of you see that draft board? Yeah, max. At least it. somewhat. I can zoom in a little yeah, bit if we I'm need good. during the that's fine. We're good. I can make it work right. too, man. I think uh, I'm gonna borrow even strategy too. Go to the pool, do a few drafts, bring a few beers. That sounds that sounds like a good plan. Dude, I even – well, the other thing I like doing, I was trying to start – you know, I've been trying to just re- read more books in general, and I was trying to, like, read and draft, but then you start getting, like, into your book you're reading, and then I'm, like, actively missing picks. And, uh, yeah, I'm also I, – I also – I usually stay up to, like, 2 or 3 a.m., man, so trying to read at, like, 1.30 a.m. and do all that. That was – like, we're talking about streaming being minus EV, you know, have a bottle of wine and uh, try to read a book and then also do a draft. How many freaking things can you do at once? <laughs> The thing that I learned I shouldn't do is for me, I sometimes I'll take a, I'll print a recipe from online and do some cooking. Mm. Do not draft while cooking a new recipe. <laughs> it's the best way to just start auto picking. Like, yo, like I'll, a- I'll be like, Oh, like I got to flip the steak. And then I'm looking at it. I'm like cutting into it. And then next thing you know, like my turn pick just boom, boom. And you just get like two dusty running backs at like F- the, the, the five, six turn fires breaking out. And you're like, Oh my gosh, like who Devin single terrier Montgomery. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> all right we're All right, at the one like, man we got the we got the first overall pick so ian first question i'm going to ask you since i know that you said that you're just getting back into the the underdog game for this season Bijan robinson is a one two turn pick he's going at pick 13 do you have any thoughts on Bijan and like what people should expect for his rookie year because i feel like he's kind of polarizing in terms of the dynasty versus redraft community and this is a i i wouldn't say it's a bad adp but it's, it is at least aggressive it's absolutely aggressive. I mean, I look, running backs, as we all know and love to say, they don't matter and all this and that. But, like, we've seen really freaking good running backs just be, on, put, be put on teams where they don't get that workhorse role because it's basically, you know, a coaching f- uh, philosophy. So the one um, – I think it was uh, Daniel Jeremiah today mocked uh, BJ – or m- mocked B. John Robinson to the Patriots. Like, would we be ranking him as a top five running back if that happened? Probably not. That. So, you know, dynasty and stuff, that's completely different, um, and that's fair. But to me, top five is uh, off. Like he has no room to go up from there. Let's just, you know, I guess a little bit of room, but come on now. All right. We're on the clock with 10 seconds. Do you, uh, are you a Jefferson chase McCaffrey guy? Uh, what are you thinking? Go Jefferson. We don't have much done. We're just going to go chalk to start. Yeah. That's how all the best streams start is you get the first <laughs> yeah. pick and you take Jefferson. Now we, now we got some time to strategize and get the squad going. Yeah. We got a little bit of time now. Uh, what are your thoughts on Taylor this year? I think he's one that's really interesting. As everyone can see on the draft board, it is ridiculously wide receiver heavy in this first round. We've got Jefferson, Chase, Cup, Hill, Diggs, Brown, Adams. Lamb even is a first round pick. Running backs are getting pushed down. And Taylor's someone that we've currently been a little bit below consensus on. I'm always open to changing my mind. Does he feel like a round one pick this year, given what's happening with the the Colts roster overall? Man, these wide receivers just feeling safer than ever. So I, I think his you know positional <laughs> ranking still deserves to be top three. But once you add in you know those wide receivers and plus Travis Kelsey, of course, and there you know it definitely gets uh, more complicated. I guess what um, what I'd be curious is there's one thing in uh, Matthew Barry's like 23 things he learned at the combine. I think uh, article where it was talking about the Eagles and you know Nick Sirianni and kind of his running back philosophy. And basically the thought was that they used Sanders, Boston Scott, and Kenneth Gainwell in his three back committee, not necessarily because he wanted to use committees but because he just didn't think he had that running back that could handle the workhorse role so it's with uh shane steichen you know coming over now and uh working with the colts you know one of those things that we're always kind of guessing like does the offensive coordinator have the exact same philosophy as the head coach uh always in a special especially pain in the ass when they're not the ones calling plays like we always have to do with the mcveys and shanahan uh and Lef- they've been lafleur disciples and all that so look we have seen, you know, Frank Reich even be someone that loves committees until he had, you know, Jonathan Taylor. So long way of saying, uh, where is like, what wide receivers is he going behind? Yeah, it's I probably right around him. like Adams, Brown, Lamb, I would say is kind of that trio. That I think I'd, I'd take him ahead of those guys that uh, have a little bit more target competition too. I think Devontae Adams is a little low. I'd probably still have him ahead of that because that's a Jimmy G factor. But I think Jonathan Taylor probably deserves top top seven top eight treatment Mm -hmm. that's fair yeah i think uh what they do at quarterback will also be interesting yeah Uh, i actually think Gardner Minshew is like not a bad quarterback for taylor i I like the quarterbacks that have a little mobility like Minshew because it helps the running backs with efficiency 
but I feel like he's not too mobile that he'd still be willing to check the ball down occasionally. So I actually think like on paper, that's kind of a good quarterback for him. Minshew, man, especially his uh, rookie year. I remember he had like a little Romo to his game where, yeah, you're right. Like he is mobile, but he does use it more so just to throw the ball, not to uh, necessarily go pick up, you know, chunks of yards with uh, with his own legs. So, yeah, I mean, what Minshew was there when uh, James Robinson was uh, going off and doing his thing with that ridiculous uh, workload. So, yeah, I mean, it is good to see Jonathan Taylor only down there at mm-hmm. RB3, but that's kind of the thing with this, man. Like last year, talk about McCaffrey and Jonathan Taylor versus McCaffrey, and then people are taking, you know, their victory laps about it. Like, I McCaffrey won. Guess what? I had Taylor too. Like that didn't work out. So it's yeah. always funny, you know, and I get it. We talk about the best players more than we are about, you know, these random sleepers. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're usually all only like one or two spots apart on these guys anyway. So yeah, that's yeah, my favorite yeah. is when you have like the, the big debate and then it's like, and we're one spot apart. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, talk to us about Garrett Wilson. He's rising up draft boards. We released our top 250 on the 33rd team.com. It's free to view. He is aggressive in our rankings as well. What are you looking forward to about Garrett Wilson with what seems almost certainly is going to be Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, I think that's the key there. Aaron Rodgers goes to the Jets. Garrett Wilson has a infinitely better quarterback situation this year from last year. The thing that I like the most about that pairing is he has one thing in common with Devontae Adams. That's being able to separate early. So, I could see Garrett Wilson becoming like a semi Devontae Adams guy from a usage standpoint in that scenario. So that's, that's why I, you know, I think we should continue to be high on him. I do like that Rogers when he seems to like a guy that is who he targets, not just between the twenties, but in the red zone as well. So I think Wilson actually has like some sneaky touchdown upside for a guy. That's what one eighty five soaking wet. I think I, right. God, he's tiny. He moves like a little guy as well. I feel like his, his limbs are like a little bit gangly as he's running his routes, but it it's, it's effective. What are we thinking here at turn? I don't think one, any of these running backs are necessarily worth it. If we can help it. Uh, yeah. I was going to say we, we've been taking these receivers here. Uh, do you have like favorites out of this group? I think it probably is Devonta and uh, the, the I, I think Devonta and I'm open to a lava versus Metcalf discussion. Right, yeah, I'm gonna let you make that call since I know that you love Metcalf. We also really like Olave. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Devonta Let, Smith just such a smash. Michael Thomas yeah. coming back does matter. Like we're gonna have Thomas ranked a lot higher in week one than he will be in redraft for understandable reasons, but it's true. Yeah, I mean, I'm torn on them too. I think for this team, I'd lean Olave just to manage exposures for our two teams because we've we probably have you probably have more Metcalf than Olave. I definitely do. So I think that's why I would lean that way for this particular draft. But in it. general, that, in general, that's a toss up for me still. It's I'm wild with the Lave. Sorry, yeah, mm-hmm. it's wild with the Lave. How you know he was averaged the fifth highest yards per out run since 2014, and the other guys are Beckham, Chase, you know, Justin Jefferson, and a four, yeah. I, me. I, Michael Thomas, I forget the fourth, but all awesome. And look, I'm a diehard Ohio State uh, Buckeye fan, you know, Columbus born and raised and all that. So I've definitely watched the guy a ton over the years. And he is incredible, you know, route technician and everything. But like, yeah. I, he does, like, we, it was the, you could not have an Olave uh, discussion before the draft last year and hear about, you know, the lack of, like, was, what, 10 total broken tackles in college and all that and stuff. So look, I've maintained, you know, they used him a lot more on deep balls at Ohio State. And as we all know, how smooth he is, you know, he's forcing the broken tackles before he's even making contact. But, like, I don't think he is Jefferson Chase, Beck, prime Beckham, like, level good. Garrett Wilson, I could see that. Like, Garrett Wilson with the ball in his hands is, like, already so freaking twitchy. Like, Garrett Wilson looks like he's moving at, like, a different speed than everyone else on the field a yeah. lot. And, uh, yeah, Alave runs past him plenty. He is awesome. I'm just saying, like, out of Garrett and Alave, like, who do I think is going to go from an upside wide receiver two to potentially, like, a top five to league winner? I'd probably take Garrett. Yeah, mm-hmm. agree, agree with every single thing you said there. Minus, yeah. minus the diehard Ohio Buckeye. Ah, uh, who are you rooting <laughs> for, Ryan? Minus that. Uh, I'm – I just stick with professional football. I've never okay. really – like I went to the University of Minnesota and I just it never – college okay. football's never clicked with me. As long as so you I, weren't saying Michigan, we're good. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Ian drops off the stream immediately if I see yeah, him. Yeah, just see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Easy, easy. Uh, player question. So I think ETN's a pretty polarizing one. He goes around pick 30 or 29 based on ADP. Uh, I think the plus side for ETN – elite pass catching resume in college 250 touches last year 
Many of them in the red zone, some at the goal line, yet only five touchdowns. Downside, not necessarily the profile that's uh, fully insulated come draft day with some uh, like goal line plotter showing up. Do either of you have some some thoughts on this? Ryan and I were super high on ETN, and then we've tempered our enthusiasm a little bit, just thinking through uh, kind of the the ins and outs of it. Is this is this going to be one of your guys if ETN's going at around pick thirty, Ian? Uh, I don't think so, man. I had all the ETN last year because I just I. I mean, he had the, the entire season recovered from the Liz Frank, and I just wasn't trusting Robinson off the Achilles when he had it in freaking December or whatever it was. So, you know, shaky first uh, month and a half there, but ended up, you know, paying back uh, just fine. But what struck me with ETN last year um, is how much Peterson, the Jaguars, like loved him. Like we see, you know, what was it, James Cook's first career carry immediately be- fumbles, immediately benched for the rest of the game. Like ETN made some really bad like drops and fumbles early on, like in bad positions. And they just kept going back to the dude. So from that standpoint, I mean, I really do think and they traded away Robinson, you know, early on. So I do think they view him as someone that, that can be the feature back of the, you know, the entire offense. And he was last year, but I do, you get a little bit worried when you start remembering some of those games at the end of the year where yes etm was coming back from injury but like jermichael hasty like unironically like taking a lot of that pass down work so i do think uh if like is was etn's first year as a pass catcher miles sanders and now all of a sudden they're gonna find the better pass catcher and you know etn yeah he's fast he's got the big playability but let's face it a lot of drops and you know you, there are like, smarter people than me about the intricacies of it the matt waldman's of the world and stuff do point to you know bad habits and his ability you know catch the football so i'm uh like you very interested to see what else they maybe do uh the rest of this offseason because it is joe michael hasty i'm not you know every every not he can't take a hundred percent of snaps out there so i'm not over worried about your michael hasty but we see them take a day two running back that you know maybe does have some cat uh pass catching prowess i'm not completely sold that etn is going to be the uh you know 50 70 target type of back in jacksonville mm-hmm. we just saw christian watson go off the board i did a podcast this morning with uh 33rd team zone alex caruso we talked about watson and i i've been kind of high on him and i think i became higher on him when i dug in more So when he was a starter last year from week 10 onward, his average depth of target was 16 and a half. Only Justin Watson's average depth of target was higher. And yet he was 12th in targets per route run. His target share overall was 22%. And it it kind of feels like that's sort of the, like the nuts role for fantasy where that can hopefully kind of insulate you regardless of quarterback. If you're getting a lot of targets down the field and you happen to be fast. So I'm starting to warm up even more to having him as kind of one of my guys, potentially not even a prospect. I loved, uh, Ryan, I was going to ask you about your thoughts going from Rogers to love, but first we're on the clock guys snuck up on us. Uh, I think we already, we don't even have a stack here with these. Yeah. We'll go late. No, we don't have a, um, let me scroll down a little bit. I mean, Terry McLaurin, wide receiver 27. What are, what are people uh-huh. smoking? I'll go well, Terry we'll here. Up, let's queue up McLaurin. We're, we're going to make sure we do the draft everybody hates. The zero RB draft, folks. It's happening on stream. <laughs> Is Najee like this year's Cam Akers? We're like, no, just can't can't do it even in round five. We've been struggling on Najee. Yeah. But if you can sell us on him, like, like this- I this haven't a, taken him yet. I need to draft him at some true. point. This is true. the point <laughs> of the wide. Like, I don't love these wide receivers <laughs> at this point. So, Yeah. It's I 40. think we just talked it, ourselves it's a good, into Najee Harris. You know, we're a good six, seven picks past ADP. If we are going to have a Najee Harris team, I guess it's a good time to do it. Folks, this is no longer zero RB. We took one too early. <laughs> anchor. I don't even anchor, know what you baby. call this team now. This is not this quite is like anchor. the mid-round anchor RB. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ryan, well, what, do you, what do you – like what's the calculus when we have Christian Watson who had like some of the absolute best fantasy peripherals, but he goes from Rodgers to Love – does that concern you? Because I, I know that I've been a little more bullish on him this year so far than you have. The The offseason's young, but I know I've been the one that's kind of like propping him up right now. Yeah, I liked Watson last year just because he's a fascinating athlete and Aaron Rodgers is a unicorn, where I probably like Ju- J- Jordan Love more than most coming out of college, but I still think the drop-off from Aaron Rodgers is, you know, we're talking top five quarterback in the history of the game. Jordan Love is probably steeper than most Packer fans think. 
That's one of the things, like, I see a lot of Packer fans that actually kind of want to get rid of Rodgers. Like, guys, this is a – I don't think this is going to be a long-term positive for you. You know, this is an end of an era. So I kind of feel the same way about him as I did about Michael Pittman last year. I kind of like him. I'm not crazy about how early he's going, but I want to stay, you know, at like 8% exposure on him. Mm-hmm. Ian, do you have any nuanced Christian Watson thoughts? I, he's, I feel like he's going to be like a highly debated player this entire offseason. Not especially, but I mean, it's certain looking good. Who else to go throw the ball to, especially with Lazard gone now. So yeah. uh, I, I'm honestly, he's like, what, what is he right now? Like, what was he wide receiver 20? What's his ADP? Can I pull that up right here? I always forget if it, it here is, we go. Wide receiver 22. Okay. That's not a bad, that's not a bad yeah. spot for him. So I'm a, I'm okay with that. I think like Ryan said, you know, I just, it's, we've seen his boom like enough so that like, he's definitely not going to be someone I'm out on on that price, but I'm actually a little more curious about Jordan love at the very end of drafts. Cause my one thing I kind of realized a little bit in underdog last year was like, I drafted a ton of Kyler and Jalen hurts, you know, in that round six, which was really cool until it wasn't right when it mattered the most. Yeah. But uh, what I would usually do with that. And what I kind of, some of my more shitty teams that came out of it were like, I think the trap some people fell into was if you didn't get Kyler or Jalen, like then the, the guys like, you know, the Dax, and he got hurt a little bit, but the Dax and the Rogers and the Braves of the world, like they kind of got pushed up closer to those true dual threat, like freaking game changers. And they probably should have been. And if you do look at, you know, preseason ADP of the one through six quarterbacks versus, you know, the low end and the QB two players, like you definitely see way more late round infiltration to that lower end. And that's where guys like, I think are built. Once you take away the L, that can run and pass at a high level like our ability to discern you know the difference uh in terms of you know like aaron Rodgers and jared goff like is just really off so guys like goff and wentz who you know actually had some good fantasy games till we got hurt we're just literally available in like the last round and we're talking about legitimate starting quarterbacks so jordan love man if he's gonna be going there around 16 17 like just give me a couple darts out there especially if you mm-hmm. already get you know your freaking stud at the top yeah jordan love has Ryan and I have both kind of loved his ADP 156, <laughs> especially considering like these quarterbacks are going. I mean, at this point, like Dax at pick 85, we've who we saw like Watson just went at pick 61, Lawrence 59, Jackson 54, Burrow 50. Like, I, I don't Herbert disagree. Went off I don't disagree with 36. where those guys are ranked relative to the quarterbacks, but I just think that where they're ranked relative to still really high. Like, you know, we're not even the RB20 range yet. And not that I freaking love J.K. Dobbins and some of these guys, but the idea of that running back dead zone was basically – you know, relative, it was like a you know fourth through like sixth round when you still have these amazing wide receivers. Like once you have the dead zone round four running back push down to round seven, like it's an entirely different story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I talked about that a little bit last season with my draft strategy that like the running back dead zone articles and the data was before we knew about the dead zone. And yeah. then we knew about the dead zone and then the ADPs adjusted, but people still drafted as if you couldn't take those guys. Like Najee Harris isn't really a dead zone back. Uh, do we do we need a running back here? Nah, we never. Uh, need a <laughs> I'm cool with Traylon I, or Deontay. I was going to say I'd lean Traylon. I just think yeah. he's really good at football. Yeah. I like big bodied receivers. That's fine. Um, We've been kind of fading Goddard and Pacheco in particular. I think, think Javante's ADP could even drop more from here, but yeah. It's, yeah. it is interesting. These types of tournaments, like gambling on the injured guy, who's not going to give you much till the end, you know, mm-hmm. you can, you can rationalize any bad move and underdog with like, Oh, I'm being contrarian <laughs> here. So I'd say, I'd say Deontay. I mean, yeah. you know, if you buy into mm-hmm. the idea that wide receivers earn their targets, which I do think there's yeah. some truth behind that, you know, he's a top dog. And as much as I do think, you know, you watch the Steelers game and Deontay, as many of those targets he gets that are literally like, you know, just flash screens, basically standing there uh, or, you know, super quick off line of scrimmage, uh, Matt Canada's back again. So I guess that's not going to be changing uh, anytime soon. Unfortunately, where do you get, do you guys have any thoughts on a uh, Kenny Pickett? Cause <sighs> he's in really bad, like, his comp groups of guys that, you know, started as many games he did like 10 plus games and had that minimal production in an offense that not, it's not the Eagles or 49ers, but it's also not exactly, you know, completely right. a void of uh, playmakers. Uh, right. You know, it's not ideal. He flashed at the end of the year, but it was one of those things where it was like, you know, 10, seven game and he leads a game running drive, which is like cool, man, but we're kind of just looking for the yeah. fantasy points more than anything here. Uh, <laughs> any overall thoughts on Kenny? 
I'll let Ryan go first because he's more nuanced. I'm more emotional when it comes to Pickett. <laughs> so I'll let Ryan take this one initially. Yeah. Yeah. One thing when Josh and I talk about Pickett, my biggest concern with him is definitely just that, you know, they were in a lot of games where the Steelers scored less than 20 points. And that's just the reality of the situation. And like you said, Ian, it's not like they have they have a roster devoid of talent on offense either. However, there's two positives with Pickett that I'm, I'm a little bit bullish on him with. Not super bullish. I don't think he's going to have like a Trevor Lawrence type jump, but I do think he can be useful in certain scenarios. He's a very good play extender. Hmm. He also has some rushing ability. And like you said, he was good late in games when it mattered the most. So I think I think there's at least a path to him being better. But where where would I rank him? I think he's going a little early here. Like, uh, Yeah, let's like figure in, out where in, he's going again. Like, would you rather have Jordan Love or Kenny Pickett? Like, I'd, I'd lean Love personally. I think they're in that same tier. Yeah, oh, same I, tier. Okay. Yeah. I wrote my quarterback tier article today, and I have – I have them right next to each other. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, young, yeah. I, I have them, I'm right there with uh, Richardson, Bryce, Stroud, and uh, Levis. I put Levis at the yeah. bottom just because, you know, come on. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, same. same. Yeah, my, my issue with Pickett that I didn't see resolved last year is – what I didn't like about him as a prospect is this was a five-year quarterback who really didn't pop until year five when he was older than everyone. And when he had this elite offensive line where he was just never getting touched. I think he had like the, it was like the highest or second highest time to throw uh, according to PFF for Kenny Pickett's fifth year at Pitt. And the Steelers offensive line is just still not great. And I feel like I didn't see anything last year to make me think that he's actually going to be like the reason that there's they, like the reason that they're sustaining drive after drive. I agree with Ryan. Like he is a play extender in terms of like his mobility, but I just felt like there were two, it was too often that these drives just stalled. And that's like, yeah, he made the comeback drive, but you scored one touchdown in the first three and a half quarters. We, we could have used more touchdowns then. So I just worry about his consistency uh, for like just the Steelers in general as an offense. And then in terms of fantasy football, like you're, you're going to have to rack up some volume stats at some point. And I think he averaged under 200 passing yards game last year, which is not great when you have Deontay Pickens, uh, Ryan Muth, Najee Harris. Like there, there's guys there that are actually like, it was an above average skill group surrounding. Him. I, w- I will give him any Steelers fans listening and just, you know, hating us at this point. I will say, you know, <laughs> I remember I want to say it was the Patriots game. Like Pickens dropped probably Pickett's best throw of the entire season. I should have been, it's like 50 yard touchdown down the sideline. Deontay, even though he's gotten much better about the drops, did have some bad ones in like a primetime game too. So, you know, I don't think it was any more excessive, you know, errors that any other quarterbacks, you know, don't have to go through as well, but you know, wasn't Deontay, you know, uh, Deontay, did he finally get a touch? No. Did he get one in week 18? No. no. He, 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 got he finished with zero. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, he zero. did actually yeah. finish with zero. He so. set all the records for <laughs> targets, receptions, everything with no yeah. touchdowns. I'd be, I, I want to read uh, Matt Harmon's reception perception stuff on those guys because I do wonder, you know, like when Russ went to Denver last year, I think one of the problems was we – in part, Cortland Sutton, but we just thought that in the Tim Patrick, I heard that didn't help, but but maybe we overestimated just how good that you know receiving group was, similar with the Panthers uh, as well. So I do wonder if Deontay and Pickens, like they're good, but you know, guess what? There's a lot of really good wide receivers out there. I'm not sure if they are, like, you know, like a top ten, top sixteen, and they probably aren't being ranked that way. But uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Jordan Addison is slipping. That could be a little interesting, and that brings me to a question that I, I have for you. Do you have a rookie at this point that you've fallen in love with? Because I feel like this is sort of the time in the offseason when when every analyst locks themselves in their room one night, watches some highlight tape, and suddenly <laughs> has uh, their, their favorite guy. So while you're thinking about that, I'm going to queue up Addison. He's falling at this point over a full round. He's going to get drafted round one. Not necessarily a player that Ryan and I love uh, in a vacuum, yeah. but a uh, hyper-productive Boletnikov winner. Going to get round one draft capital. Getting him at pick 96 kind of feels like a steal. Uh, who else are you guys looking at? Let's see. We we have Probably one running back and seven receivers. We might have just like completed our receiving core, actually. I was about to say, I think we can uh, dabble in the running back range right now. What about Khalil yeah. Herbert? I mean, Deontay, yeah. if Deontay Foreman's actually the only other move they make, I mean, that's pretty good news for Herbert. I understand that yeah. Herbert, you know, not the most ideal short yards back and all that, but if he's going to be the one getting the pass down stuff, like that's what we're always looking for uh, anyway. So with Herbie, you know, number one yeah. rushing yards over expectation uh, last year, I'm, uh, I'm fine. Because like RB29, I think he is going to be – 
their lead back, you know, could be famous last words if, uh, you know, a Bijan or someone lands there. But uh, RB29, mm-hmm. you know, round nine for someone that, again, we saw last year when he got the bell cow roll, man. The guy knows what to do with it. Yeah, I think Khalil Herbert's just really good at football. And I, I feel like that's what kind of keeps him from being the the dead zone running back is I feel like the dead zone running back is often like, we're questioning the talent. Like I think Rashad white falls more into the dead zone back than Khalil Herbert, even though the draft capital is different just because like Rashad white didn't actually do anything particularly well last year. That's why the cries for him. Brady. Yeah. The cries from the start were so weird. Like look Fournette was bad as well, like on the ground, but you yeah. look at these stats, you know, yards after contact, you know, the rushing yards over expected, like the stats that are doing their best job to, you know, really just shed the offensive line concerns and anything else going on with the offense. And you guys see Rashad white and Leonard, for net there at the bottom so i agree with the eye test idea like that he had more juice than lenny last year which you know lenny playing with uh those injuries he had you know isn't all that surprising but you know it's not even close to like the zeke tony pollard or david montgomery khalil herbert you know comparisons where those backups had like massive advantages and efficiency so at that point you can go into the like okay is this mm-hmm. is this a three-point shooter that can shoot 50 percent on 12 per game versus four per game like there definitely is something to be said about having that being able to maintain that efficiency with the higher volume but Rashad White couldn't maintain that efficiency on light volume so Mm -hmm. so you mentioned a little bit of Montgomery there let's actually switch over to the the Detroit running back room Ryan how do you expect the usage to play out I know that we're generally pretty bullish on Detroit Uh, I would assume Ian's bullish on Detroit because he works in the industry I think you're actually like legally not allowed to dislike (laughs) anything the Lions do (laughs) What, what do you expect Ryan for this swift Montgomery breakdown since this was the Highest fantasy points per game backfield in the NFL last season. I mean, especially since they paid Montgomery a pretty good price. I think he's looking at Jamal Williams' role, plus maybe a little bit more passing down work. That said, like, we've been bullish on DeAndre Swift still because, one, if David Montgomery gets hurt, Swift's one of those guys that's not drawing dead at being a top five scorer at the position. Two, he's a better athlete than Montgomery. So the idea of him turning this into more of a 50-50 split where he gets more high-value touches than Montgomery is something that I'm kind of interested in. But still, I'm still trying to work through how they're going to figure it out, especially since mm-hmm. Dan Campbell came out and said that it's kind of a clean slate this year for Swift. Ian, how would you put these guys into tiers? Since I would lean Swift, the ADP heavily lean Swift. I actually think they should just be like closer together, but I kind of like both just because of this offense. Do you have a preference? Like, how would you tier these guys roughly? Because I know you're working on tiers over at Fantasy Life. Yeah, I think they're, 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 I could see them being the same tier uh, for sure. I'll, I'll give Swift a knock because I'm more confident in him getting the pass down more because that's the thing, man, especially if we're playing full PPR, which I know we're doing half here with Underdog, but full PPR. Jamal Williams last year, you know, he goes for 17 rushing touchdowns. He was the RB18 in PPR points per game, man, because he had 17 right. targets all year. So now Jamal, similar to Montgomery, like we saw in some of those Green Bay days when Aaron Jones missed time, like Jamal went out there, workhorse roll, three downs, only a couple games, but he did his thing. Like he's not this incompetent pass catcher, and neither is Montgomery, but it's not just DeAndre Swift and Dave Montgomery, guys. We're also going to see Craig Reynolds or freaking Justin Jackson again yeah, out there. Right. So that was like, you know, I, I really – Again, and Jamal last year going as like the he was RB high forties, RB fifties. Like he was, certainly was a smash relative to his ADP. But you know, I remember comping him to like this year's James Conner and the touchdowns he was. But the thing with James Conner was, and what I thought for Jamal was going to be, you know, the idea was that this guy could take over the three down role with one injury to the team starter. And that's not what happened at all when DeAndre Swift actually missed time and was even banged up throughout the year. Jamal only had one game with over 50% of the offensive snaps. So hell of a lot of fantasy points in Detroit. And that's awesome. You know, I'm not going to be ranking the guys outside my top 30 or anything uh, like that. But unfortunately, you know, they're cutting this up three ways and I don't think that's going to stop. Mm-hmm. All right, we're about to get back on the clock. Picks 10 and 11. So we're basically halfway through the draft. I'll recap everyone that's listening. We've got Najee Harris, Khalil Herbert at running back. And then we have our wide receiver core filled out. We have seven of them Justin Jefferson, Devonta Smith, Chris Olave, Terry McLaurin, Traylon Burks, Deontay Johnson, and Jordan Addison. Yo, we so got I'm some like gonna... receivers with some cheap quarterbacks too. So that's perfect for stacks. Yeah. Let's see. Do we? We don't have any Detroit guys yet. Do we have any Seattle? Oh, you know what? Maybe we should have gone Metcalf. We could have uh, uh, snacked the Gino. Uh, Kenny, Gainwell here. I'm I'm fine going Gainwell. We need a running back. Ryan, who who do you want the other pick to be? 
I'm fine with Gainwell. Uh, you want to take yeah, your guy I mean, Gino? Yeah, I mean, we can. Not really super enthused about taking Gino with no stack. I say we yeah. wait well, another, another yeah. bit on the court. This is what, like, we don't need the reach on these guys. I don't think there's enough of a difference. So yeah. We could take Dylan. Doing. I'm kind of low on Dylan as a grinder back in a bad offense. Yeah, but, but he's also like a full round below ADP. And I think if Jones, like Dylan, you could argue, is someone that could just get a workhorse role if Jones goes down. Yeah. He's competent enough. Let's go, Dylan. These are the types yeah. of running backs that, you know, with this construction that we're, uh, you know, we're not going to find them in round 10 or 11 with like absolutely zero uh, issues with it. So, yeah, it's a pretty fun team. I, I actually go. like this running back room a lot considering we have elite receivers. Harris, Herbert, Gamewell, Dylan, not bad at all. I'm going to turn back to what we were discussing before when we had to pick several picks ago. This draft is moving quickly. Uh, Ian first, and then Ryan, a rookie that you're you're high on right now. Since all of us, we like I said before, we go into our we go into our basement, we watch some highlight tape, we look at some some advanced stats, we fall in love with a guy, and then we find out they're the consensus wide receiver 34, and it becomes our guy. Who who is that this person for you? It doesn't have to be like that that extreme. It can be a player we all know, but who's your guy at this point in the offseason? I, I really haven't gotten super deep in the weeds yet. I let free agency settle and then I kind of use these last couple months to get at it. I will say I respect my guy Josh Norris a lot over there, at underdog fantasy, and he was comping Jalen Hyatt to Teddy Ginn Jr., which I think could be a lot of fun. So you can call Ginn a bust, but my man's played like 15 years in the NFL <laughs> and was still stretching those fields for noodle arm Drew Brees <laughs> by the end of it. So I will say, I mean, Hyatt, you know, the concerns with it, like, okay, he was this, you know, more of a one year uh, wonder in terms the production and stuff but man if you have that deep ball ability i mean you know you do have the devin smith bus here and there just how many buckeyes can i you know wrap around into this uh talk here but <laughs> I, I do think you know that kind of is the one trump card that we see at the position where you know speed kills you know as they say so if you do have that ability to really take the top off um i'm, I'm interested not only in his own personal fancy ability but just add, adding him to an offense that you know needs that field stretcher you know would love to see my guy uh will fuller get back out there in action at some point Point. but i've looked you know if you look at those on off splits with guys like will fuller deshaun jackson especially man you look at like every quarterback yeah. he played with in his career that sort of piece just makes the whole offense uh so much better so i was really happy to see the cowboys get their brandon cooks because yeah. dak really hasn't had a, a wide receiver you know like I, and i know cd and cooper can stretch the field but more of like a pure wide receiver two field stretcher and the other guy who i would love to see maybe a dj chark get over there is with the los angeles chargers and justin herbert you know let's give him someone to run under that freaking bazooka of a right arm he's got maybe it's jill and hyatt hi i'll work on the name yeah, <laughs> yeah. So let's please let's please get justin herbert some speed let's please as, please do that as the resident chargers fan i really hope that hyatt is a charger yeah i i think it's kind of the perfect fit and i do like his adp he's going at pick 114 wide receiver 54 for a guy that's very live for round one draft capital who has that field stretcher skill set it feels a little bit late i'm gonna say it uh, based on the projected draft capital yeah uh, it, it seems like the, the underdog drafters are giving him no chance at round one draft capital. And it seems like that's still kind of like a 50, 50 up in the air chance. There's always that like round one receiver that is again, not liked by like kind of the fancy community and stuff like that. And they end up hanging around that wide receiver four, wide receiver five range. It was a uh, Jalen Waddle two years ago. And that was almost like people were just thought he was still hurt and stuff, even though we didn't really have that. And last year was Jahan Dotson going in like the wide receiver 60 range. And, you know, at some point, just trust the draft capital mm -hmm. man so like i get it like you know you want to have your own process and everything like that but when an nfl team says they value this guy as like a top 20 player like period at a minimum you know if you think the guy's at least somewhat decent they're probably going to get enough opportunity to make it worth your while i also think that that's a disconnect between dynasty and best ball or fantasy drafters is you might say like oh i don't like Jahan dotson and dynasty and it's like okay maybe this guy doesn't have the ceiling because of xyz in your process but for year one in best ball, he has round one draft capital. The commanders made it incredibly clear he was going to be a focal point of their pass attack. It doesn't matter that they have McLaurin there. It doesn't matter they have Samuel there. It, we saw what happened. He went on a he went on a run when he got healthy in the second half. So I feel like people kind of have that disconnect. We're like, oh, I just don't love his career. And it's like, we don't have to love his career. The guy's going at wide receiver 50 something. <laughs> do, do you think he can beat that in year one? And I think the answer is often yes for the those round one guys. Ooh, are you guys even touching Kyler? He's already flying. 
even further down this ADP? Oh, I think the answer is no. I, but this is about where he should in, be ranked. Yeah, this is about where he should we, go. Yeah. We, we've been we've been warming up to Kyler now. Now that yeah. he was going, I think at like pick a hundred to start no, draft no. season, we were like, this, oh, that's really yeah, early. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, once he gets to like the one thirties, one forties, I'm like, oh, that's I that's actually his, quite tempting. I have him in his own tier as my QB twenty one. Just like, why won't God turn injuries off? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, we don't have any quarterbacks yet, so we, we should probably take a quarterback eventually. We don't have to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess we probably should. Just, well, just roll with none. We'll do the first stream ever where you, we just no don't take zero quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at quarterback. I don't yeah. love – like I, I think Stroud is a pretty good bet at this point. I'm still worried about Stafford's back. I don't know, Ian, yeah. if you have concerns about that. Ryan and I are still a little concerned – that like he hasn't been gung ho about committing to playing this year. Yeah, I'm I'm good on Stafford. Um, we could also stack Pickett. Yeah, it, it's, Pickett. Car's gone, right? Yeah, we got let's get Pickett. We have Najee and uh, yeah. Deontay. Yeah. All right, we'll get Pickett in there. Uh, who else are we thinking? I'm leaning Stroud or Kareem's ADP has a chance to boom depending on where he goes. I know there are a lot of rumors about the Broncos. Mm-hmm. They signed P Ryan, but you know it wasn't a massive wasn't a massive yeah. deal. Let's see. We're at pick one. Yeah, we go. We go hunt. If you have, have a, almost, if you I like one of these hunt. rookie backs, if you like one of these rookie backs, that's fun too because the same principle is there for him. We'll, we'll go hunt. He's over. He's a round <laughs> and a half after ADP. I don't have a lot of Kareem Hunt. There we go. Yeah. And then we can maybe double tap quarterback on the way back. He wasn't point. like I understand. Like last year was the worst year of his career by you know most of the efficiency uh, measures, but you know it's. It's possible again. He's going what RB freaking outside the top forty. So like, if he gets in a position where he's not trailing Nick Chubb, the guy doesn't have a ton of you know carries uh, to, uh, to his name. So the age, I believe, is still under that. Uh, you know, he has been in the league a bit. What is he now? He is. He's twenty seven. So easily, you know, twenty nine thirty is when it gets really bad. So I get it. You know, in dynasty, you're not investing in him much more these days. But I do wonder. I mean, he's a guy that hasn't even had more than two hundred carries and since his rookie season. I mean, uh, my guy Tay Seth uh, um, does a lot of good stuff with Eric Eager uh, and, and their squad, formerly PFF. But he found that you know when you really start seeing a guy's rushing yards over expected fall off is fifteen hundred professional carries, and Hunt's not even at nine hundred uh, just yet. So. I'm I'm not overly concerned about him being completely washed, especially at you know again the chance to maybe join you know a Broncos or a type of team where has a chance of getting that featured role at least for a little bit. Mm-hmm. I mean he's not he's going to play football somewhere, so like let's take a chance on him when he's cheap. That's a good point. Maybe. I'm a little concerned about the legal stuff, but maybe I'm just over concerned about what Kareem how teams oh, no. view character some, concerns. You mean the past? Didn't he have something else? No, didn't he have something else surface? Mara and Mixon have been the two recently. With most I saw Kareem Hunt saying as well. Maybe I'm wrong. A, I'm gonna pull that up. A, this would be embarrassing if I missed it. So, but, but thank you for letting me know. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I'm wrong. I thought he did. Ryan, talk through a, a rookie or higher on as I look into seeing if Kareem Hunt. I thought I saw something in the news, but yeah, I I, uh, maybe maybe I made this up in my head. But I, I thought there was something. <laughs> I, I, I twittered Kareem, uh, like Twitter search Kareem Hunt, and the first thing is like, according to Tyreek Hill's Snapchat story, he's currently hanging out with Kareem Hunt in Miami, and just shows him on a boat. Like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see it now. You know what? It might have just been a rumor that had no weight, and now it's gone. Because I remembered seeing something that he was like, it was like wrong place, wrong time type news. It was kind of like the Joe Mixon thing, but Imagine a little bit more mild. Dolphins. Let's put Kareem Hunt in the Dolphins yeah. and see what happens, man. That'd be hot. That'd be fun. <laughs> That's the biggest – one of the biggest disappointments for me for free agency. The Dolphins go into this, and freaking Jeff Wilson, Raheem Mostert, yeah. Miles Gaskin yeah. are all unrestricted free yeah. agents. Even Salvin yeah. Achman was a restricted free agent, and they're just like, oh, come on back, guys. Like, yeah. come <laughs> on, man. And it was such an annoying – like, we literally had, like – one game and that game barely counts. We had one game before Mostert got put on the injury report with a knee thing of Wilson and Mostert just being seemingly both healthy, but it was also Wilson's first game with the Dolphins. But their snap splits were like 49 and 47 percent. So mm-hmm. I'm I don't know, but the thing is, like, that's one of those situations where those guys are both probably going to have to be in the same tier, low end RB3 range, I'm guessing. And like, the second we know what the actual rotation is going to be and whoever is going to be, you know, the lead 65 guy versus the 35 guy. Like he's going to be a weekly, probably mid tier, low end RB two Cause that dolphins offense guys, if Tua can just fingers crossed, knock on wood, stay healthy a little bit. I mean, that's a top 10 group right there. 
Would, would you lean? Would you lean Wilson having the advantage towards being the sixty-five percent guy? Yeah, you know, Mostert does have some of that Cordero Patterson to him, where like he spent right. so long in the league not getting force-fed like carries up the middle that I don't think you know the wear and tear is quite as bad as a uh, you know his age would suggest. But we did still see Wilson, where again it's tough to know fully what these NFL players are going through. You know, they're playing through you know yeah. just a myriad of injuries and stuff. But Wilson was kind of winning out down there mm-hmm. towards the end, even in games right. where Mostert was at least healthy enough to be active. So yes, I, I will have Wilson you know ahead of Mostert. Yeah, that's kind of how we have it is that he's a little younger. Uh, Wilson quietly had over 1,000 total yards last year, which I didn't realize until I started digging in. Mm. So it shows that he's like kind of competent at this higher volume type role over the course of a season. Hey, we go a little bit end? more in the pass catching game. Do we go tight end now? Because I think Everett and even Jawan Johnson, I think are pretty good values here. Yeah, we're both big Jawan Johnson guys. Let's see. We might actually want to take Stafford here, even though we hate him, considering we do only have Pickett and he's two rounds past. We can take ADP. we can take two two in round eighteen. Let's go. <laughs> Everyone all see, right I with mean, this? We'll we'll get our first tight end yeah. our second quarterback. Yeah. I don't think I've taken Stafford either. So like from a from that standpoint, I'm yeah, you know, obviously no one's happy about it, but Jawan got paid a little bit. What do you think though about uh, Gerald Everett? I'm surprised he's this low. I mean, last year he did, he his, his, he was a kind of a upside tight end too, but you know popped off for a hundred and a tutty in that playoff game, and he couldn't quite get the routes because the Chargers would you know whether it was Donald Parham or Stephen Anderson or Trey McKitty meow you know they'd always have this other guy out there going and just limiting Everett to this like 60 65 percent route rate. We want that to be higher, but changing offensive coordinators now with. Uh, Kellen Moore, maybe we actually see Everett get to be a little more of a vertical guy and hopefully have that more of that Dalton Schultz uh, feature tight end role. Because, I mean, look, I think Herbert is – we. I think he's probably consensually better than Dak, but whatever. Say he's, like, you know, just as good. I, we can all agree on that. Like, I definitely think Gerald Everett's a lot better than Dalton Schultz. So maybe there's some things that Schultz does better, like sitting down at the right part of the zone. But I, I, I always say, man, like Schultz to me, like has the highest percentage of like catches and big plays in the league where you like immediately congratulate the quarterback of the play call before you actually get to him with it. Everett, man, you look at like the yak numbers since coming to the league and he's right up there with guys like George Kittle and, you know, pre-Patriots John News. So I do think, uh, you know, these later rounds and, you know, similar sentiment, I think like I'm happy with the way we handled a tight end where, you know, it's not messing around with that middle class of group. Like if we're not going to get our guys at the beginning of the draft, just be ready to throw, you know, a handful of uh, picks at them there at the end. Mm -hmm. So as a, as a charger fan, I watch all the games. I watched a lot of Everett, two things. One, the good, you see the yak ability when you watch the games, he looks like a receiver. I think he wore, what was it? Number eight this past year or seven. Yeah. Like the visor. He he does like he looks more like a receiver running back type. Given all of that, he does not look like a tight end. He does not move like a tight end. Here's where I'm concerned about Everett and why I'm kind of neutral on him at ADP because I think the big case for him is he plays with the Chargers and he's a freak athlete. The issue we lost Keenan Allen for for at least half the season. You're losing Mike Williams for large parts of the season. There were many games where it's basically Josh Palmer and wow, now I'm forgetting his name. The the super Super skinny, fast. DeAndre guy. Carter. DeAndre Carter. Even Guyton was hurt early in the year. Yeah. And still, Everett wasn't getting crazy snaps. He wasn't getting an outrageous target share. And that's kind of what concerned me is that if they bring in another body, if they bring in a field stretcher with some decent draft capital, uh, they bring in Chark, they they draft someone like Jalen Hyatt, and his receivers stay a little healthier. What, what is Everett's role in, in that offense? Is he just getting 12% of the targets and – not enough volume to spike. So that's kind of like my conundrum with him. Yeah. I mean, at this point though, I mean, he's going next to a guy in Trey McBride who, Hey, not touch. And it looks like Zach Ertz's ADP is buried enough. Anyway, he's, you know, certainly one of those guys that, you know, we very well might not see until uh, October or on, but like Trey McBride could like just be a backup on this team next year. Like not trying, you know, I, I get it. Rookie tight ends don't do their thing, but a lot of money tied up with Zach Ertz. And once he gets back out there. So at this range with Everett, you know, I certainly think uh, that's plenty baked into his uh, ADP. So we should, I mean, he might drop to us here and we can just have the uh, best of both worlds. Hopefully any, um, who, what other quarterbacks do we have available? We have two, but I wouldn't mind a third. We definitely need at least a third. If not a fourth. Yeah. 
If not, yeah, I was going to say because it's yeah. a twenty round. These are twenty round drafts. Now, oh, we got twenty now. Hell yeah. We might be. We might just stick with seven receivers. I don't. I can't think of yeah. which receiver is going to enter this receiving group. Two two baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like we. Yeah. I'm Go I'm for down for like one. a two two dart throw at the end. Yeah. But like, like we take what like one more running back and just start loading up on like just auxiliary tight ends and quarterbacks. I guess. Let's see. I'd be fine getting Ritter in a couple rounds. Not that he showed much last year, but uh, that Falcon. Mm-hmm. I can see the Falcons being okay next year. I mean, they really have been spending a ton uh, in free agency. Mm-hmm. That offensive line is going to be pretty good. You know, they they have. I mean, Arthur Smith. We know he isn't going to be uh, going out of his way yeah. to uh, pass the ball and stuff. But we, I mean, Ritter. Like, I think Mariota is actually a good comp for Ritter because he does have the athletic ability. He just doesn't always go out of his way to uh, run, which is probably good for a quarterback's uh, development and well-being. Honestly, mm-hmm. uh, more times yeah. than not. But you know, if Ritter turns out to be like okay, like you know, a mm-hmm. QB two that has some big boom games here, I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm fine waiting for something like that. We can even maybe handcuff and we could go like. Ritter Heineke, even I've thought about doing that. At this, I'm just saying, like, hey, yeah. they they might each start half a season. You're getting them in the. I did that a couple of years. I did that in 2020 with uh or 2021 with Jameis and Taysom. Because when you're doing it here at the very end of the draft, I mean, uh-huh. uh, yeah. All right, who are we thinking? I just realized. Uh, Jay- Ag- we need like Jaylen Warren, running back, tight end help. Zach Evans, Jalen Warren. Warren, Cuff Naji. Yeah, we but- can. I like again the bat. You don't want to handcuff like in the past when it's Zeke and Pollard. When it's like okay, now one of my fourth or my ninth round. Yeah, picks no, is dead, this guy's but, pick one ninety two. It doesn't matter. Yeah, at that point. So, and that's how I feel uh, about the quarterback idea as well. So, um, yeah, I think we're we're probably good on running back now. We have six running backs. We'll just queue up the tight ends and quarterbacks. More likely, maybe. Oh, Hunter Henry, Hunter Henry. Yeah, you want Hunter Henry? Yeah, that's your guy. I'm good with that. That's I don't think team. I don't think Jasicki's going to take any of his snaps. That's totally fair. He he looked pretty bad this past year. I, my go-to has been Fant since we both like the Seahawks. Yeah. But I will say it was concerning that Will Disley played so much. Yeah, and <laughs> I was uh, – dude, they paid him to uh, play that much as well. So and it sounds like yeah. D- Disley had this weird injury. I mean, oh God, you listen to Pete Carroll talk about any injury, and it's always you know a pain trying to figure out <laughs> what that dude's yeah. uh, saying, just the ultimate optimist with everything. But, nah, I mean, no Fant. OJ Howard, you know, we just we keep on keep on hoping, but I'm just definitely not touching uh Hayden Hurst down there. My goodness. What are they doing in Carolina? <laughs> yeah, that it's a little bit strange there right now. I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of touchdown equity from the these Panthers receivers. Well, like the thing is their GM was this, like the current GM who now went out to give Hayden Hurst his pretty big deal. was the same guy who extended Ian Thomas in the first place and they just restructured his contract. Then they used like a second round pick on Tommy Trumbull. Like if anyone there has actually flashed a little bit of explosive ability, I think it's Tommy Trumbull. So I know they view him more as a, you know, block first guy, but regardless in Carolina, man, it's just one of those teams where you look at just how often again, they rotate these three, four tight ends. It's like, just miss me with all of them. Slow man, Hayden Hurst, Adam Thielen at, at 33 years old, or however old he, old he is. Just Terrace no Marshall, it's yeah. yeah, Marshall's gonna be no the speed. fastest guy by a lot, and he's <laughs> yeah. not even really like a, a speed guy. Nah, it's horrendous. Yeah. Them and the yeah, them and the freaking uh Texans, yeah, true. Yeah, they're I'm, just not great spots for a rookie quarterback. Uh, I'm mouse died. Good, good, good thing you're uh, running the sticks. <laughs> Yeah, my, my mouse hasn't died yet, so so fingers crossed. So we've got uh, three picks left. We'll, we'll definitely take another quarterback. We'll definitely take another tight end. And then I think from there it could be kind of fun to choose either the four quarterback or the four tight end build. I kind of think we're live for both, so we can kind of see like how the draft falls and who we like. But uh, let me see. Are the, are the two Atlanta quarterbacks still on the board? I don't think that would be the worst thing. I think that would be kind of fun if we ended up with Ritter and Heineke. I don't hate it. I mean, Heineke has had like – They're okay. both mobile. Right. They're both mobile enough. Like he- Heineke's had some QB1 games over the years. You know, I think he's a really bad quarterback. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we've seen bad quarterbacks have uh, good fantasy performances before. Again, it's best ball, baby. Like we can just uh, we can rationalize any way we want. Mm-hmm. Why, is, uh, why is Tannehill QB31 though? I mean – Ryan and I have, we have way too much Tannehill at this point. So 
people just like want him to suck, even though he, we have like four years of evidence that he doesn't at this point, you know, it's such a weird thing. I know he's 35 and we're not going to get those like seven rushing touchdowns a year anymore, probably, but God forbid that uh, Derrick Henry trade actually goes through and you know, we're we're, all of a sudden that's like Ryan Ryan Tano. Like if we would be that shocked if he like finishes around, you know, the Jared Goff cousins tier, like he's done it. He did it before when he wasn't actively injured and couldn't play. So, We could also take Tannehill here. So I have like 40% Tannehill. I can always take more. I will say we have trail on uh, yeah. the latest the Yeah, we have trail on and the latest mock for Daniel Jeremiah. I think he had what JSN going to the Titans. Ooh. So at least like some smart yeah. person that's plugged in thinks they're going to take a receiver. Yeah. The, yeah, they trade Henry. They have Burks and a fun rookie. So we'll see if anyone's listening to the stream, but yeah, we could get our, our Titan stack then, huh? Let's go. Do we have any yeah, other perfect. Titans? I don't think so. Yeah, if they take Addison, that would be pretty crazy if we had just loading up on a the, how, the Titans. How, how early is Chiggy going right now? He's going at like 140, 135. Yeah. I'm yeah. still in on that price just because yeah. yeah. he's like his closest yeah. comp athletically is probably Kittle. Dude, his freaking like per route numbers are out of this world. But like I just get like the John U kind of concern because the Titans just refuse to feature like any single tight end, but at that price. Yeah, he, uh-huh. Yeah, I, I, I think he's a, a fun bet potentially. So we can we can shore up quarterback here. We'll get Tannehill. Yeah. I think he's really safe. Pickett, yeah. sort of who knows? And then I feel like Stafford's the wild card. So we're basically just gonna bank on Stafford's health. Uh who do we like at tight end then? Uh, please, please don't say Bellinger <laughs> or I I've been but avoiding Hurts just I because think, he's so yeah. old. Foster Moreau probably, right? Who was he I just could, I be on board with yeah, that one? Yeah, he was just there was just like a rumor of a team talking to him. It might have actually been the Chargers. Interesting. Yeah. I would say Moreau. Is there anybody? Oh god, it gets thin quickly. It's I can't I Let's go Seth, Moreau. Who's Seth Green? I don't know. I don't know who that is. I'm not sure that is either. I have never. He's heard right, the sandwiched between here. like the two like freak athletes, which is kind of funny. We he, we could do, uh, we could I'm do the sure. ugliest stack. We could do the ugliest stack of all time of Stafford and Hunter Long. No, I like Foster. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll stick with Foster. <laughs> what if he, uh, dude? Like, yeah, there's a couple I mean, teams. Uh, Hunter Long was uh, blocked by Mike Kosicki, which yeah, which is no, very I concerning. I hear. <laughs> I'm waiting. For I these. did like him as a prospect, though. Hunter Long looked yeah. awesome. I'm waiting on these last to. few uh, free agency dominoes to drop, and then I'm going through all the depth charts again to try to, you know, get a handle mm-hmm. on like the last few, you know, big time landing spots. But like Dallas and Miami, especially at tight end, man, like you know, maybe they do just do the committee thing, and the the answer to which one the draft just ends up being no. But if we hear like Foster Moreau signs in Dallas, dude, like he'll be right, top. Right. Is he going to be that far behind Dalton Schultz at that point? I don't know. Yeah, that's actually a good point. He might be, I think he's probably more athletic than Dalton Schultz to begin with. He's, you know, he's actually had a real nice uh, sample without Darren Waller over the years. Now they would use him out there in that like, you know, 100 snap roll and it's 100% snap roll. And it's, you know, you don't see that with every team, but not a, not terrible by any stretch. I remember uh, a couple of years ago, people were like getting so hyped about Foster Moreau and they were like crossing out Waller and just like sticking Moreau in the top eight, like, and then he busted. But if you just look at the larger sample, you know, he's, he's done some good things. Mm-hmm. All, right. All right. We got our last pick coming up. So I think Cordero Patterson goes around this range. Oh, now you're let's, speaking my are, language. Yeah. <laughs> Let's team, see team pick one ninety. Oh, you already won. It. If if we're gonna take your 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 fandom out of it, are you are you able to give us realistic expectations for CPAT? Since at this point, Algier is there, Caleb Puntley's there. They might draft a running back, but it is Cordell Patterson, and I think like he he's probably just gonna defy age curves at this point. Just absolute king shit year after year yeah. after year. <laughs> I mean, nah. I mean, he shouldn't be going. <laughs> RB 57 is a little rough, but like you said, I, it's just more the way Arthur Smith is using him. Like, yeah, if it was just Algier and CPAT, that'd be fine, but it'll be Caleb Huntley and then it'll be Avery Williams, who looks like he's, you know, five feet tall when he's out there. And we yeah, are hearing, uh, you know, it, look, I, I, I hardly have, you know, fantastic sources or anything, but the uh, Falcons, B. John Robinson, uh, you know, steam kind of going on. Who I wouldn't mind. I think I heard it was plus 1600. He lands on the Falcons. Arthur Smith gets his, you know, Derrick Henry uh, type of player. So 
unfortunately, uh, I'm not going to be overly in on CPAC. I got to, you know, I have such obscure players I like stand that I really just got to take that out of it in uh, fantasy. So I didn't, like, I remember when CPAC was breaking out in um, 2021, like, everyone's like, oh my God, Ian, he must be crushing his CPAC everywhere. And I was like, actually, no, but, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy that he's doing his thing. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone that you wish we talked about so far as we're finishing up? We're in the final round of the draft. This is uh, a little bit. Yeah. While Ian's looking, Ryan, is there anyone that you wanted to to mention on this stream? Uh, Like a player take that you're, you're refining at this point. No, I'll I'll just go back to the question before about the rookie. I'll I'll stick that in there. Josh Downs would be my guy. I wanted him Mm -hmm. to go to Dallas. I think the Brandon cooks trade kind of, reduces my enthusiasm that but he's you know a, a slot a primary slot player quick short area quickness has a little bit of long speed too i'd be real interested to see him go somewhere like buffalo somewhere like that now a pass centric offense with a real quarterback so mm-hmm. he, he's adp sliding a little bit too so i'm gonna i'm gonna end up with more of them than i already have yeah who, who do people think i like deontay hardy at receiver if we take an eighth receiver. oh is he still here I like Pierre Strong at Hardy running back because I don't tr- trust. Yeah, Hardy is going undrafted, which doesn't make sense. He was like six oh, yards per route run the last. That's time why I was saying him. scroll. Yeah, for sure. And they just got rid of McKenzie. Like, and his deal, yeah. his deal is like eight million or so. I mean, McKenzie. We were freaking out about Jamison Crowder getting like a veteran minimum deal, and they just gave Deontay Hardy like actual money, and he's nice money, yeah. been pretty damn good when he's uh, been out there. So I think that's a great call. I. I don't, look, guys, I, I know I said his name a few times. I know he's 120 pounds, but 2 2 out well at the end of the year, getting that role. I mean, look, if you're looking for a guy that only needs two targets to do his thing, no A Rob, mm-hmm. and we do see they drafted him in the freaking, you know, pick Second 50. Round. Yeah, pick yeah. 57 yeah. for a reason. So, again, only 23. Never know. Yeah, he. He, he looks like me. That's kind of fun. I always like when a player has the same body type that I do and makes something of themselves athletically. So, <laughs> But I will say, like, impressive. Deontay Hardy being there, like, it's not even close. Got to go with Hardy. Yeah, yeah we have Hardy ranked, where... like, what, 170, Ryan? Do you remember? Yeah, we had him ranked really like aggressively. That, yeah. Something like that, yeah. yeah. I mean, especially on this team where we're going to need a breakthrough receiver late, where, like, he's the guy where, you know, if he's going to – if his score is going to count – 110 yards, a touchdown or two. He actually has that capacity in that offense too. Where does Rashid Shahid go? He goes early, like pick 160, 150. Oh, geez. It's hard. Yeah, we. I think it was someone that Ryan and I probably thought we'd be in on, and then we saw that he's going. I thought he was going to be like the last round dart throw because I was kind of like, all right, there's Michael Thomas, there's Olave. Right. Are we sure they don't draft somebody? There's Juwan Johnson. Yeah. He, I, he's fast though. Well, I just, just know. Like Hardy, he had those awesome like yards per run numbers in 2021. Like you know how it is, Josh. Like anytime you do like a you know 25 target you know study or whatever, like you just keep seeing yep. his name up there with like the best wide receivers. And last year, Shahid was doing the same freaking thing uh, with what he was able to do on you know, a smaller yeah. sample. So part of me when I saw that, I was like, was this just like a Saints offense thing? But I went back and I looked, you know, a little bit more just at both guys and they weren't fluky plays, man. Like when Hardy mm-hmm. was going like mm-hmm. 75 yards against the Cowboys, breaking all these tackles, uh, Shahid running by dudes, making Bengals look silly on a reverse. I mean, I think they can ball and, uh, you know, credit to the saints, man. You talk about, uh, I know we always give the Steelers credit for, you know, the incredible wide receivers they've had, but in terms of like taking late round undrafted guys, I mean, going all the way back to Marquise Colson, I mean, the saints have just yeah. gotten more out of that position than just about anyone relative to the, Draft capital, mm-hmm. and when they're drafting pretty high up, man, they're doing a pretty good job too. They are. Let's review this team. So we've got Kenny Pickett, Matthew Stafford, Ryan Tannehill at quarterback. We have Najee Harris, sort of stacked with Pickett, Khalil Herbert, Kenneth Gainwell, A.J. Dillon, Kareem Hunt, and we have Jalen Warren. We like the Steelers on this team. <laughs> pretty palatable ADPs, to be honest. Uh, Famous receiver, last there. Yeah, <laughs> receiver stacked with Justin Jefferson, Devon Smith, Chris Olave, Terry McLaurin, Traylon Burks, Deontay Johnson, Jordan Addison, Deontay Hardy. Stacks here would be Burks with Tannehill, would be Deontay with uh, Pickett. I mentioned before, Addison is live to go to a team like the Titans. So maybe we get that double stack. And then at tight end, we have uh, three fun guys, Juwan Johnson, Hunter Henry, 
Foster Moreau. Essentially just going to play a game of touchdown roulette at tight end, which I think generally, like if you're not going to get like a Kelsey or a Hawkinson, it's not the worst strategy to start playing some tight end roulette. Uh, Ryan, give me uh, a couple of picks that you like on this team. Um, we don't have a lot of Kenny Pickett, so I think stacking him with Deontay Johnson is just something that, from like a portfolio standpoint, I like that we did mm-hmm. that. Um, finishing up with, uh, what's his name, Deontay Hardy? That is an, inter- <laughs> an interesting, interesting last-round pick for a team that's absolutely loaded at wide receiver. So I like that, too. Mm. Yeah, it's going to be kind of unique with that type of receiving core. I think it's cool also that Pickett, I mean, God, we – he he could he could be pretty good. We'll see. I I'm trying to say nice things about him since I feel like every single show all I do is just talk about how I I hate that he played five years and wasn't good till year five. But you know what? Deontay Johnson's really good at football. We've got Najee Harris. We've got Jalen Warren. I've been wrong on teams before. I did not see the Bucks being the second lowest scoring team in the NFC last year. I I could yeah, very man. well be wrong on the Steelers and. And these tournaments, when you have over a hundred thousand different entries overall, you, you are threading the needle. This is a needle threading team. I actually think it's pretty well balanced. Ian, a couple of picks that, that you really like from this one as you're you're looking through it overall. Yeah, I think you know, Pickett and Henry, maybe we fell victim a little bit to like we need this position. But we were so late yeah. in the draft at that point, like we kind of did need the position. I so think, yeah. at least we weren't making those, you know, kind of 10, 15, you know, pick reaches. Also being at the turn doesn't help matters because we're gonna have that big of a gap. So uh, I would just you know. Normally, I know you're trying, like when we're in a tournament like this, we are really trying to get like the perfect, you know, you know, value every single time out. But we did manage, you know, with a couple of the guys, uh, Deontay Hardy, 11 uh, picks past ADP and, you know, especially some of those uh, running backs. So, um, again, with the free agents, Kareem Hunt and Foster Moreau, like I just think we have a lot. And even Jordan Addison, like this is the time to draft those guys because they have such a nice ability to move up. And I am fully expecting them to play football. So last year got burned a little bit on, you know, the Will Fuller one, especially taking him Oof, at the end. Yeah. But hey, when you know when it is that late, like Foster Morello, especially like okay, your 19th round pick or whatever. If he doesn't go somewhere great, you know, it's not going to kill us. But the other one that didn't exactly work out due to some injuries and stuff, but you could see it from the ADP was Julio Jones, where he was literally available in the final round of drafts. And guess what? Like, yeah, he signed on the Buccaneers, which was a fantastic landing spot or so we thought uh, for the guy. But honestly, like all 32 teams, any of them signed Julio Jones last year, like he was going to be higher than like the wide receiver 90 or whatever he was at that point. So giving ourselves, you know, some room to have potential just screaming values in Kareem Hunt, Foster Moreau and Addison, uh, I think makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. I'll wrap that up. So everyone that was uh, following the stream, thank you for, for tuning in. This was Ian. This was such a good time. Yes, Maybe sir. we'll, we'll have you back at some point. So just a reminder, everyone it's I heart. It's like cheese. It's on <laughs> Twitter. The senior analyst at Matthew Berry's fantasy life podcasting with Dwayne McFarland. Do you have any projects that you want to tease that are coming out uh, later on? Or are you still so early on in your tenure? given that this is what week one and a half. Oh, no, man. We got plenty of stuff uh, out, out there already. You know I'm always grinding. But, yeah, just had uh, actually an article go up uh, today on the 20, my 22 takeaways from the first week of free agency. You can get that at fantasylife.com. Actually wrote our newsletter for the first time, which is actually free. So even if you guys, you know, aren't a big newsletter fan, hey, maybe you can subscribe as a thank you uh, to Josh and me. And, you know, just why the hell not? It is free, which, you know, I'm not asking a lot there. And uh, also have an injury article up uh, today where, you know, one of the things last year, like I drafted way too much Gus Edwards at this time of the year just not fully realizing like his potential to not be there in week one so I didn't want to let that happen again I went through every single player that had you know a season ending injury leaned heavily on you know guys like Dr. Evan Porras Dr. Jeff Mueller and you know there's a lot of information out there on Twitter so uh, you know it's funny I was listening to these like two Chicago like physical therapists talking about Darno Mooney and this like random YouTube podcast and found out he's gonna be more than fine uh, in week one by you know Mooney's uh, personal like trainer himself or whatever so i grinded and i feel you know i got one through ten scale on all the guys and yeah all the content's uh free so always great when you can offer that but yeah appreciate you guys having me on uh fun first draft of the year uh we'll watch the film and get better but i like how it turned out guys i do as well ryan uh talk to us about what you have coming up and if you want to just tease your your super bowl bets article that i know we co-published it but it was like 85 percent you know so if you want to tease a little bit from that and anything else that you're working on right now. 
Yeah, we uh we're Seahawks bulls when it comes to futures markets. We just think they're underpriced. We talk about it in our super bet super bowl bets article. We're gonna get a best ball compilation and everything you need to know of all the stuff we're doing as it relates to underdog right now. That should be up tomorrow or Thursday. We'll have this draft in there. Have a lot more stuff on the horizon too. I like it. And Ryan is at Ryan Reynolds NFL on Twitter. I'm Josh Larkey at Jay Larkey tweets. If you want to support us, you want to support the show, just go to the 33 team.com. Check our content out. It's free. And is it MB fantasy life or just fantasy life? MB the, fantasy you are, life. Yeah. MB fantasy life.com. Their content is also free Two young startups trying to take over the game from Ian, from Ryan, from myself, from the 33 team, from fantasy life. Thank you everyone.